You're listening to the Nansanity Chronicles podcast. I'm your host, Nancy Andrade, aka Nansanity. I'm an online health, wellness, and business coach, social media strategist, group fitness instructor, and Beachbody Live master trainer. I created this podcast to help entrepreneurs like yourself learn the do's and don'ts of building a business online. So without further ado, let's dive right into episode one. First, I want to start by talking a little bit about how I got started as an entrepreneur and my background in business in general. Ever since I was a little girl, I've always wanted to own my own business, but I never looked at myself as an entrepreneur. I was always looking for different ways that I can make some money on the side, even if it was taking seashells off the beach and making jewelry. Yes, I did do that. One of the other businesses that I had was I made friendship bracelets for my schoolmates. I didn't realize at the time that this was an entrepreneurial thing that I was getting myself into. I just looked at it as ways that I can create something and earn a little bit of money on the side. That was my first side hustle before side hustle was a thing. I mentioned in the intro that I am a group fitness instructor, and that role is kind of how I developed my current business. But to give you a little background, let's go back. When I was about eight years old, I remember sitting on the couch watching my Saturday morning cartoons and a commercial came on for a product called Get In Shape Girl. Now, if you're not a child of the 80s, you may not remember Get In Shape Girl, but it was basically a fitness program geared towards tweens. We weren't called tweens at the time, but that's what it was. It was geared towards girls from the age of about 7 to 12. And I had already learned that I had a huge passion for fitness without even realizing that's what it was. I would do the morning exercises with Mickey Mouse or size, if you remember that at all. I know I've just completely aged myself. But I would wake up every morning at 5 o'clock and do Mickey Mouse or size in my living room, not realizing that I was exercising. It was just fun to me. So when I saw the Get In Shape Girl commercial, I knew that I had to have it. So I begged my mom to get that for me for Christmas. And thank goodness she did because that is where my fitness journey started. It was literally a cassette tape that described the moves that you would be doing, a poster that had about five or six different moves, and a couple little props that you can use. Bracelets that were supposed to be weighted bracelets, but they weren't really. Uh, Leg warmers, of course, because, you know, it was the 80s, so you can't have a fitness class without leg warmers. And a headband, because, again, the 80s. I was absolutely obsessed with my Get In Shape Girl program. I wanted every single version that they had, and they had about five or six different ones. Unfortunately, we didn't have a lot of money, so I had to make do with what we had. But I knew that I enjoyed fitness, and I knew that I enjoyed creating new moves because that's what I started to do. Once I got bored with the old moves, I would come up with new ones. And that kind of segued into just watching different videos on cable TV. I would watch Candy Colby's Body Factory, Body by Jake, Billy Blank's Ty Bo, Denise Austin, you name it. I was watching it. I was doing the exercises, and I just grew more and more obsessed with fitness. And I don't really like the word obsessed, but that's pretty much what was happening. When I was old enough to enter the workforce, I knew that what I wanted to do had to do with fitness. So at the age of 15, this was back when you could get certified at the age of 15, I got my first group fitness certification with my mentor, Candy Colby. And my very first job was as an aerobics instructor. That's when we were called aerobics instructors and not group fitness instructors at a now defunct gym called Living Well Lady. I also had a huge passion for musical theater. Performing is just in my blood. It always has been, and it's just something that feeds my soul. But not just performing, creating. So I found a love for choreographing through my experiences in musical theater, and that's something that I continue to this day. Over the course of the next couple of decades, I would teach group fitness on and off. I became certified in multiple different formats. And I would also perform in musical theater on and off. Why do I say on and off? Because, you know, life gets in the way. I had two kids at a very young age, so my focus was being a mom for quite a number of years. Once they were old enough that they could actually join me at rehearsals, then I got back into musical theater and I never looked back. 
I did have a full-time corporate job as a collections and customer service manager, so that meant that I had to fit my musical theater projects in in the evening. So basically what I would do is I would work my full-time eight-hour gig. Usually I would stay probably a good 10 hours and then go home, scoop up my kids, and head over to rehearsal for the next few hours. I would do that every single day of the week, sometimes on the weekends as well, consistently for about 10 years. Now imagine being a single mom, waking up every single day at 6 a.m., getting your kids ready for school, then going off to your day job, spending eight to 10 hours in, I'll just say it, corporate hell, then picking the kids up, heading over to rehearsal, which could often be a 45 minute drive depending on what production I was doing with what theater company, having rehearsal well into the night, not getting home till about 10 or 11, and then doing it all over the next day. Needless to say, that rigorous schedule took a toll on my health. I wasn't really involved with fitness a lot during that period of time. My fitness basically came from dance rehearsals. But because of the taxing schedule that I had and just all the balls I had in the air, I was getting sick all the time. So I knew something had to give. That's when I decided enough was enough. I'm sick and tired of being sick all the time. I'm really tired of being in the hospital all the time. And so I decided to get into the best shape of my life and get my health back on track. And that's when I discovered insanity. If you're not familiar with Insanity, it is a very high-intensity cardio program. You might have seen the infomercials, and that's what totally pulled me in was that infomercial in the middle of the night. I was convinced that this was the best thing that I could possibly do for myself. I had absolutely no business trying to jump in to a program like that after not having a whole lot of time in the fitness world anymore. But I figured, you know what? Zero to 60 is how I go, so it's on. It was probably one of the hardest things I had ever done. I had a really big wake-up call and really started to question myself, what the hell did I get myself into? But I did it. I went the full 60 days. I modified whatever I could modify. And I just looked at every single workout as an opportunity to do a little bit better. So once the 60 days was done, I had not felt that good in so long. I knew that I was going to commit to doing another program and just pushing myself even harder. I had more energy. I was not nearly as sickly as I had been up until that point. I just felt better. I was sleeping better. I was just feeling like I had been revitalized. So I decided to become a coach. As a coach, you get a discount on the products, and then you also earn a commission on products that are purchased from your website. So I figured, why not? I'm sharing my journey. People are talking about needing a change, and they're coming to me because they see my journey. So why not make a little money on the side? There's that entrepreneurial spirit again. A few months later, I saw an ad for Insanity Certification. And my mind was blown. It never even occurred to me that this would be something that I could go out and teach. I went and got my certification. I became an insanity instructor. And from that point on, I had committed to the goal of becoming a master trainer. I knew that I was going to do it someday. Had no idea how I was going to do it or when I was going to do it. But I gave myself a five-year goal. I did it in four. And now I certify others to become Beachbody Live instructors. I certify people in insanity, size, and country heat. But I gotta tell you, my journey as a Beachbody coach was an ugly one. And I know that's the case for a lot of people. And that's kind of why I wanted to do this podcast. When you become a Beachbody coach, or if you get involved with any multi level marketing, direct sales, whatever you wanna call it, organization, there's really no hard and fast rules. You kind of have to do a lot of trial and error when you first start. And when I first started, this whole online entrepreneurship thing was kind of new, especially in the MLM world. So we didn't really know what to do and what not to do. I can't tell you how many times I look back on posts that I did five, six years ago when I first got started on this MLM journey and Seriously, it's cringeworthy, some of the stuff that I posted. It was, again, trial and error. So 
I don't want you guys to have to go through that process of trial and error. Why not learn from my mistakes? That's my goal, to teach you the things that I did wrong that didn't work and teach you the things that I did right that not only worked but helped my business to grow, flourish, and thrive to this day. And as I mentioned before, I love to create. So through my journey as a Beachbody coach, I discovered that Beachbody coaching isn't really for me. While I love the opportunity, I think it's an amazing opportunity for so many people. I love the company and everything it stands for, and I love helping people on their health and fitness journey. The coaching network side of things is just something that doesn't speak to me. What does speak to me is helping people grow a thriving business without having the constraints of being pigeonholed into one market. And that's why I'm creating my Business Coaching Academy. The Academy is designed to help entrepreneurs from every type of industry be able to grow a thriving business online. Whether you're part of a network marketing organization, whether you own a brick and mortar business, or you have a product that you've created yourself. My Business Coaching Academy is currently in development, so there will be some information in upcoming episodes. Look out for that. Thanks so much for spending this time with me and getting to know a little bit about me and my journey. My goal is to provide you with as much value as possible. So please leave me a comment and tell me what topics you'd like to hear on a future episode of the Nansanity Chronicles. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Thanks for listening.